she's probably playing with her farm animals. They're her only friends after all. Family, that's not very nice. The girls are being mean. He kissed me. My first real kiss. Ah, family! Family, today we're gonna be watching a video that apparently is even crazier than the Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber drama. Nothing could be crazier than that! Well, actually, except for the noise that Baby Nuggie's tummy growls after he eats three bean burritos with extra cheese. Hi, I'm Becca from Wisconsin, and this is the story of how I finally left my comfort zone and what I found on the other side. No, oh, family, this video is already crazier than that drama. Cause look, we have a chicken and a very weird looking llama. Why is his face doing that? I grew up very comfortable on a lovely farm in the country. Yeah, beside a chicken. Had cows, chickens, and even two pretty silly pet alpacas, salt and pepper. When I was little, dad let me steer our huge yellow tractor on his lap. It was thrilling. Whee! I'm on top of the world. No, Missy Miss. You're on top of a tractor. They're different. Becca, when you're in the driver's seat, you can steer in any direction of your choosing. Always remember that. But when I steered us right into an apple tree, oops, my bad. Dad banned me from touching the tractor again. Being independent and doing something new meant disaster and punishment. I remembered that. But after so many years, I was starting to crave adventure, though it scared me to death, especially since the girls at school would always make fun of my ripped overalls and faded sneakers. Look at her face. Was she scrubbing the fireplace? Nah, she's probably playing with her farm animals. They're her only friends after all. They called me Beccarella, like Cinderella. It wasn't very original, but the name stuck. Oh, family, that's not very nice. The girls are being mean. All because she has a pet chicken and alpaca. Family, I have a pet baby nuggy. And people aren't mean to me for it. Well, uh, except for baby nuggy over here. Sometimes he's savage. Arr! Family, comment down below, farm. As a secret word in today's video. And me and baby nuggy will heart your comment. But things finally turned around one day when an exchange student arrived at our school from Germany. I had never met anyone from another country before. I love that book. Isn't Mr. Darcy dreamy? He's so romantic. We became fast friends. Lena visited the farm and met my alpacas. We'd go shopping and stay up all night having sleepovers while reading about flirting in girly magazines. <laughs> it says here that flirting is all about eye contact. Like this? Maybe dial it down a little. You look crazy. <laughs> Lena was all about trying new things, unusual foods, taking risks, visiting new places. I can't wait to see New York one day. New York? I could never. I liked comfort and predictability. When Lena asked me to try a German dish I'd never heard of before, I wasn't so into the idea. It's so delicious. What are those green things? Thanks, but I'll stick to pasta. Yeah, what are those green things over there? Oh, uh, snails, you say? Oh, um, delicious. <laughs> How do you know what you like until you try it first? While Lena made a good point, I wasn't so easily persuaded into leaving my comfort zone. Sadly, Lena's time quickly came to an end. You have to come visit me as soon as you get the chance. But imagine all the fun we would have lost out on if I had been afraid. She was right, I promised. Then she left and I was sad and I missed her terribly. Then something magical happened. Our principal told us that we could apply for a semester abroad in Germany. I was terrified of leaving home, but with Lena there, it would be way less scary. But when I saw how much the program cost, my eyes practically popped out of my head. There was no way my family could afford that. But I made a promise, and where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a baby nuggy who has $40,000 in his diaper. Who can pay for us to go to Germany? Oh, wait a second, family. That's not $20,000. That's something else. Slow down, Rufus. Stop tugging so hard on the leash, Lily. Shh, it's okay, it's okay. Your parents will be back soon. Should I sing you a lullaby? Ka ching another knitted hat coming right up. My plan was working. I was making money. Germany, here I come. But on the morning I was supposed to fly to Europe, Lena called. It sounded like she'd been crying. 
Becca, I'm so sorry, but my mom just accepted a teaching position in Australia. We leave tomorrow. Tomorrow? But what about our plans? Our adventures? I'm so sorry. This was all so unexpected and last minute. But you made a promise. Yeah, to you! And I expect you to keep it. You can't stay on the farm your whole life. Go live, see the world. I told her I would think about it, but the idea of going to a new country alone without my friend there was way too scary. So I told the study abroad coordinator that I wanted to back out of the trip. She told me she wished she traveled more when she was younger. And then, Lena's words rang in my head again. How do you know what you like unless you try it first? Reluctantly, I agreed. Whoa, family, this is a lot of drama! Becca is now gonna have to travel all the way to Germany by herself. And she is super duper scared to do that. I boarded the plane with tears in my eyes. I was going to a country where I knew no one to live with a German family I had never met in a place where I didn't even speak the language. I was gonna be all alone without my family, my farm, my alpacas, and without Lena. I arrived at noon the following day in Munich. I had been too sad to sleep on the flight, so I was totally exhausted. <laughs> My host family picked me up at the airport with a cardboard sign that read, Welcome to Germany, Becca. They were really kind, but my host brother Klaus rolled his eyes at me when I asked him why Europeans use military time. I couldn't help but notice he was cute, but his rudeness mostly distracted me from that observation. Mm. Everything felt unfamiliar and confusing. I didn't understand how the windows in the house worked, how to set the thermostat, or why my clothes came out crispy after washing. I began to feel very homesick. I missed my parents, my siblings, salt and pepper, my cozy bedroom, even my school. But I told myself that I'd try to enjoy the experience to the best of my ability. I had worked so hard to get here. Uh, and spent a whole bunch of money! Becca, don't you remember? It was $20,000! <laughs> That's more money than Baby Nuggy will ever make in his whole life. Especially if he just continues to be a lazy bum. And watch Netflix and eat all of my chips. He ain't making money like that. And I wasn't gonna waste all that money and sacrifice. The next morning at the breakfast table before school, Klaus joined me and stuffed scrambled eggs into his mouth like he hadn't eaten in days. I barely nibbled at mine. Why don't you refrigerate your eggs here? You really know nothing about Germany, do you? It's just a question. And why does Germany use Celsius and not Fahrenheit? <sighs> Let's go, we're gonna be late for school. He drove us to school every morning and I pestered him with questions about his home country. His cold demeanor melted a bit, and he started actually answering my questions, and even started asking me some questions back. I couldn't help but notice how attractive he looked in his knit sweaters that emphasized his pronounced biceps. <sighs> so, do you really refrigerate your eggs in America? How unusual. Mm-hmm, and the grocery store even designates people to bag our groceries. If I come to America, would you be my one-on-one -on -one tour guide? I need to see this for myself. I'd love to show you around. Oh! Uh, family? Are they flirting? Because I saw that drool coming out of Becca's mouth. And I also heard Klaus say that he wants Becca to be his one-on-one -on -one tour guide. Whoa. I couldn't tell if he was flirting with me or not. Was he making eye contact? I was pretty sure he was. And I had to admit, I didn't mind it. School was a mixed bag. Learning German with a tutor was difficult. It felt like I was born with the wrong tongue. But I studied each night and began to master the basics. I even had a short conversation with the bus driver in German about the weather, which was exciting. At lunch one day at school, Klaus handed me the house keys and told me he wouldn't be able to take me home as usual. He had to study with a few friends for a math test. I told him it was fine, but I ended up taking the wrong train home and ended up in a totally different city. I called him, and he had to pick me up instead of studying. I'm so sorry, truly. <sighs> that was my only time to study. I can't fail. I've been so busy with swim practice. You're ruining everything. I'm sorry, I'm still learning how to navigate here. I don't know my way around yet. When we got home, I couldn't find the keys he gave me. It was pouring and we had to stand in the rain till his parents got home. He was clearly upset, but remained silent. I vowed to myself I'd master the German public transportation system after that. Later that night, 
He knocked on my door in his pajamas. I opened it. Yeah? I'm here to apologize. You didn't get lost on purpose. You're not from here, and I was rude. Aww. Can you accept my apology? No worries. All is forgiven. He cracked a smile that made me feel like melting ice cream on a hot summer's day. Do you need a study buddy? Actually, I'd appreciate that. We spent the night on the couch. I quizzed him with flashcards, and then we spent the rest of the night just laughing and talking and sharing stories. It was so romantic, but I wasn't sure if he still just saw me as a friend. The girls were really nice to me. They asked me to sit with them at lunch, but often they'd speak German really quickly, and I had no idea what was going on. The whole experience made me admire Lena even more. She didn't seem to be faced when she had been in America. She had adapted quickly, yet I felt like I was majorly struggling. I felt like a baby. I called Lena. Was it scary for you to live in the States? Of course, but you're building strength and resilience. You can do this. I'm proud of you, and Aww. I know we'll reunite one day. Talking to Lena always made me feel better. She also was certain that Klaus had feelings for me. After the call, I went to the kitchen for some tea, and Klaus came running into the kitchen with a huge grin on his face. He showed me his test. He had aced it. Oh my gosh, congrats. Klaus hugged me, and I hugged him back, and my heart was beating out of my chest. I wouldn't have aced it without you. No problem. Happy to have helped. I actually have been meaning to talk to you. I would love if we could... Before Klaus could finish his sentence, his parents walked in saying that we were all going out for dinner. No, 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 no. wait a second, Mr. Parent, sir! Klaus had something really important to say! What were you gonna say, bro? Oh, man! Parents ruin everything! Except when they feed me chocolate! Mm -hmm. I was so curious what he was gonna say. Was he gonna confess his feelings for me? I tried not to dwell. Life isn't just about romance. I was making great friends and getting better at German, too. I was getting to experience the world for the first time, away from the farm and comfort of everything I knew. And it wasn't as scary as I thought. Actually, it was pretty great. On the morning of my 16th birthday, Klaus knocked on my door. He stood there with an ice cream cake singing happy birthday to me in German. I was touched that he remembered my birthday and my favorite ice cream flavor, mint chocolate chip. Aww. I blew out the candles and we ate the cake in the kitchen. This is really delicious, thank you. Give my compliments to the chef. That would actually be me. You baked this? I thought this was a professional cake. I may have woken up at 5 a.m. to bake it for you. Wow, thank you. I love it, it means a lot. Since my birthday was on a Saturday, he drove me to the city where we shopped, took photos, and explored some art museums. We were having a lot of fun together. Maybe he did see me as more than a friend. Are you having a good birthday? Yeah, it's the best day ever. Thank you. I really like you, Becca. Oh, you do? Yeah, you're interesting and beautiful and unexpected. I wanted to tell you a while ago, but I chickened out. I thought maybe you saw me as a friend. I've liked you for some time, but since we both live under the same roof, I didn't want to make things awkward. But I can't hold back my true feelings any longer. I really like you too, Klaus. Oh! I felt like I was in a Jane Austen novel, but without the uncomfortable clothing. Here he was confessing his feelings, and here I was confessing mine. He took me to the movies. While we were sitting in the theater, he reached for my hand. The warmth of his hand sent electric bolts throughout my whole body. Afterwards, he took me to a gorgeous park overlooking the city. I was so grateful at that moment to be spending time in a different country. I was so proud of myself for having the courage to leave everything I knew behind. I was learning so much and becoming the person I was meant to be. So what did you think of the film? To be honest, I was a little too distracted to focus. Me too. And then he kissed me. My first real kiss on my birthday of all days. Ah, baby! A smoochy smooch from her birthday boo. Scandalous. His lips were so soft. I hoped I was kissing correctly. And I tried to remember what the magazines I had read with Lena advised, but I got so lost in the moment and it was magical. He put his arm around me and we watched the sunset. It was the most romantic moment of my life.
and the best birthday ever. I was so happy. My study abroad semester wrapped up and I was not the same person I was before. Klaus and I promised to stay in touch. I was sad to leave him, but I knew I'd be back someday soon. I returned home to the farm and my family could see my transformation. I gave my alpacas big hugs and even brought them lederhosen. At school, Claudia approached me and called me Becquerella again. I'm sorry that you feel so bad about yourself that you need to project your insecurities onto me. I feel bad for you, but I'm no longer your punching bag. I walked away, leaving Claudia speechless. She never bothered me again. A few years later, I headed to college in New York City, the Big Apple. At the dorms, I watched the city through my window. Everything was new and different and overwhelming, and I was ready for it. I heard a knock on the door. Klaus was standing there. Hey. What are you doing here? I was in the neighborhood and wanted to stop by. What? I'm going to school here too. He kissed me. It felt like no time had passed at all. I was on cloud nine. Then he told me he had arranged a surprise for me. Another one? Then Lena came in. Was I hallucinating or something? Hiya, Rumi. Oh my gosh. That's right. Lena was my new roommate. We were finally reunited. This was the best day ever. We all walked together, ready to explore this new and strange city. I remembered how surviving my study abroad experience had felt impossible at first, but I ended up thriving. Like Dad once said, when I'm in the driver's seat, I have the power to steer my life in any direction of my choosing, except in the case of crashing into an apple tree. I don't endorse that. <laughs> Family, everything turned out so well for Becca, yeah! And Klaus flew all the way to the other side of the world to be with his love. And also apparently to be with some really delicious red apples. Mmm, fruit. Don't forget to get Baby Nuggie and the Family Hoodie at shopalexia.com. If you like today's video, smash like and smash subscribe. Me and Baby Nuggie love you so much. And we'll see you all in tomorrow's video.